Real-time effective risk management is top of line for global business leaders across all industries and business sizes. Leveraging technologies like machine learning and artificial intelligence helps to provide those solutions for more effective risk management tools. I'm Jill Malandrino. I'm with Tag Cyber, and joining us for the segment, we have Andrew Beagley. He's Chief Risk Officer over at Optimize, and we're going to look at a platform that leverages these technologies for more effective business and risk management. It is great to have you with us. Welcome to Tag Cyber. Thank you very much, Jill. It's great to be here. Thank you. And Andrew, give us some of your background and a high-level overview of the company. Thank you. So um, by background, I'm a Chief Risk and Compliance Officer. I typically worked with um, big organizations in financial services, um, healthcare, and insurance broking. Um, I've built enterprise risk programs and compliance programs. Um, but the way I would categorize kind of the evolution, if you like, of the risk management world is traditionally, we've all been building what I would describe as governance-based programs, which, are really, which really revolve around periodic risk assessments, risk registers, um, PowerPoint slides, Excel spreadsheets a very traditional approach, if you like, with a lot of subjectivity. And frankly, given today's threats and challenges and the rapidly changing risk landscape, cyber, data privacy are, are two really good examples of that. What we found talking with many, many CXOs at Optimize is that that traditional approach to risk management is simply no longer good enough. And as we often say to organizations, you don't see the cyber hackers using PowerPoint slides and Excel spreadsheets. So if you're really going to be on the front foot, you know, on top of your game, you know, getting your organization into a position where it really understands its risk profile, the technology that is available today through Optimize allows organizations to pivot um, and to, to make that leap and to put them in a position where they're able to make more intuitive decisions and frankly smarter decisions around their risk mitigation strategy. So Jill, that's kind of an overview of um, where, I, where, where I fit it in and what we're kind of doing at the organization. Well, it's interesting because risk management, to your point earlier, it's no more Excel spreadsheets, it's no more PowerPoints. How has it evolved from, let's say, when you first started into where we are today? So I think there are some, I, I divide that into two pieces, Jill, actually. There's, there's the internal realization within organizations themselves that the traditional approach is no longer good enough. So there is a desire amongst um, different stakeholders, whether that's the chief risk officer, the CISO, the CIO, um, the chief privacy officer as well. So many, many folks internally, there's a desire to take their programs to the next level. So that's kind of the internal piece, if you like. Uh, and the reason that that's you know, top of mind now is because, as I said, the, you know, the rapidly changing risk landscape. But alongside that now with Optimize, the external piece is using AI and ML, a, a much more kind of, a, you know, technology driven approach. The, the, the platform is now available to help organizations with that leap. So what we're doing through AI and ML is allowing organizations to take whatever it is they have today, and we're not suggesting that you know, an organization is starting from scratch, you know, far from it. But by leveraging our technology, it's helping organizations get themselves to the next level. If it. Right, and you had mentioned, you know, it could be for the chief risk officer, the CISO, the chief financial officer. And I think part of the evolution is everyone tends to operate in silos. And it sounds like this platform helps to bridge that gap because you're not only doing cyber risk management, there's a number of verticals that are available and optimized. Absolutely right. So, so, so two points to that, Jill. First of all, um, we have what we describe as a kind of a data normalization process. So we'll, we'll invest data from any number of different sources, um, which could be spreadsheets, but it could be through um, APIs. So we get everything into the platform, if you like. But that's coming from any number of different risk sources themselves, whether that's cyber, uh, which is typically what we talk to organizations about first. That's obviously one area that's top of mind. But also we're helping organizations pivot to take a holistic view of their data privacy risk, their compliance risk, their ESG risk. And then again, using the technology and the near real-time functionality that we have is then to create what we would describe as an enterprise-wide view of that risk through the through the connectivity, if you like, for technology. So at each of those stages, you're not only talking to different personas, whether you're somebody 
day-to-day -day working in an operations area or a manager of a team or a CISO or a chief risk officer, you, you also have the wherewithal then to actually you know, make better presentations, more intuitive presentations to your executive teams and to your board of directors. And importantly, again, using our technology, all of those data sources, all of that analysis comes from the same place. Right. So, again, from a from a, a personal note, you avoid like the night before scramble when the when the papers are due and you're wondering where the numbers have come from. Everybody in the organisation is able to tap into what we describe as this single source of truth and leverage that for multiple purposes, you know, on multiple occasions. Right. I mean, because it inherently takes away those silos, particularly when you're working with so many vendors. It seems to be that companies are just engaging with so many more vendors. So to be able to keep that transparency across the entire organization, I think makes, especially when it's time to talk about budgets and so forth, it makes a lot of sense to have that holistic view of it. Absolutely. Yes. And obviously, you know, companies have always gained huge benefit from those different vendors, those different applications and so on. But what we're doing at Optimize, and again from listening to you know over a thousand CXOs across different industries, different verticals and the like, is to really help them find a smarter way of putting of all of those different pieces together through the connectivity to create that near real time holistic and enterprise wide view. It's in essence what so we're when we think about the f future of risk management, what does it look like next three, five years? It, it just evolves so quickly. That, uh, so what we're seeing today will look totally different again in three to five years time. You know, we're at the cutting edge at Optimize of this kind of new world, if you like. We, we're redefining risk management. But just a couple of examples of what, that's, what, what that will look like. You're going to see risk management as a whole evolving into much more of a, I would describe as kind of thought leadership. Um, once you have successfully used the technology, you've created the analytics, you've created the more intuitive dashboards, you're then in a much better position, a much smarter position to be able to make decisions around your future and so on. AIML, um, you know, our platform is cutting edge there, but this is just the beginning. We're going to see that becoming the norm. Um, and we know that from all of the, the CXOs across different industries that we're talking to today. Many companies are just starting out, but this is like so many other things in today's world. We're not going, we're not going to go back from right. this. And the discussions that we're having in, as organizations think about their futures and not just short-term budgeting, but more holistically about you know, the roles that they're playing in society and so on, regardless of you know, the, their customer base and who they serve and so on, by leveraging the technology, by being more forward-looking, by being more predictive, uh, by being more analytical, you're actually just going to become much smarter about you know, the services that you're providing to your customers, you know, on top of improving your bottom line and efficiencies and so on and so forth. So we do, so in, some, in summary, Jill, we, we see this as very much the beginning. Um, we see ourselves as a pioneer in that space, there's no question about it. Uh, and the engagements that we're already working with organizations on are demonstrating that uh, by using our platform, we really are helping to, as, as we describe it, redefine risk management and into this more what we, in, in our words, a risk modeling AI ML driven space. You had mentioned that companies will eventually be positioned as thought leaders, community leaders, societal leaders. I want to touch on your ethics background for a moment here. What are some of the considerations when you think about AI and machine learning? So it's, it's a great question. At the, fundamentally at the heart of everything that any responsible organization does, it's the culture, it's the tone from the top, and it's the ethical role that it plays. Not just if you're acting as a fiduciary in certain parts of the financial services industry or if, in pharmaceuticals and so on, but more broadly, all of us have a collective responsibility to, frankly, improve the world. Right. And when you think about it, you know, risk management is, you know, in some respects, it's a, to some people, it's a narrowly defined term, but you know, understanding where you lie on your risk journey, whether that's part of your organization, whether that's a part of a, a, a personal journey, the whole ethical piece where that fits in, it, it's all part and parcel of the same thing, really. And within an organization, you know, ethical conduct is top of mind. 
um, communicating to your clients in a transparent way is top of mind, not cutting corners and so on. And again, using AI and ML to you know, understand and be transparent about your, your risk profile, the processes that you have in place, the more transparency you can bring. Absolutely, like ethical conduct and so on goes, you know, goes hand in hand with, with that. It's so interesting because when you think about newer technologies like AI and machine learning and the governance part of the equation, three, five years ago, we weren't talking about that. So to your point, what we are observing as our environment right now is certainly going to look different. I mean, even if you think about the role of a CFO, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just about finances anymore. Right. A lot of technology responsibilities are coming underneath that umbrella. Uh, so to see just how much technology is integrated with the governance role of companies, I think is really interesting and will continue to evolve. Absolutely right. And it's interesting how the term governance is used so often, but when you think about what is governance, what has governance really meant for many organizations? To be honest, it's an alternative word for subjectivity in a way. Right. You know, you come out of a board meeting and you know, somebody might say, well, we had a really rich conversation today. In fact, more often than not, what's often happening is people are trying to make you know, sense out of the data that they've been presented with, and they don't have all of the answers. They're not able to, you know, to, to make smart decisions because they're looking at piecemeal information. They're not looking at information that's in real time. And by using today's technology, by leveraging a platform like Optimize, what you're able to do is to take a lot of that subjectivity out of the equation you're able to remove bias because all of us have like short memories. Well, that's the challenge with ESG spans. anyway, right? Yeah. It's so subjective. The entire umbrella of it is, mm -hmm. is subjective. Yeah, and, and specifically on ESG, you know, we've t already talked to many organizations about where they're at with their programs, and there's some common themes coming about it where organizations are at today. By and large, most large companies have taken what we would describe as a first step on their ESG journey. So they may have hired consultants or vendors to help them at least understand what ESG means for their organization. But almost universally what, what we're finding as we talk to companies about ESG is they're really struggling about how to take their program to the next level. And importantly, to add value not just to their own bottom line, but again to their communities and to the people that, you know, they're the customers that they're serving. And what we see companies are crying out for and what we're able to provide through our technology is the ability to tie their ESG risk to the impact on their goals and objectives. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, as a risk modeling company and as a decision-making platform, whether it's ESG or whether it's cyber or whether it's data privacy, that's the linkage that, that we're providing. So you can see the knock-on effect of you know, the risk sources through to the risk types, whether that's cyber data privacy. What does that really mean mm -hmm. for your goals and objectives? Because ultimately that's what risk is. Right, well, and every industry needs this, right? It's one thing to communicate your ESG strategy, but what we're missing here is a way to quantify that and what that translates into the bottom line and what it means for the communities as global citizens. And it, now there's a way to, to measure it, at least from a risk perspective. Yes, absolutely. And on the, your point about quantification there, Jill, you know, traditionally programs, whether that's ESG or cyber or data privacy or enterprise, they very much focused on what we would describe as a qualitative approach. So we're very used to seeing PowerPoint slides with red, amber, green, high, medium, and low, and so on. But what we're doing at Optimize, and uh, actually just interesting, very recently we received our first patent oh, from the, the US Patent and Trademark Office, and it's specific around uh, the use of AIM and ML for risk quantification and benchmarking. So that's, and that's a component of the, that's at the very heart of our, of our platform. So when you think about it, you know, if you're in a board meeting and you're presented with a PowerPoint slide that shows an amber risk versus a PowerPoint slide that shows a $10 million risk, which one is going to focus the mind? And that's what we're able to do is prov by providing the quanti quantification, uh, the more intuitive analytics. Again, this goes back to the point that we've been really been emphasizing here, is it helps us to help our clients with their decision-making processes to get organizations onto the front foot by seeing dollars and cents rather than red, amber, green, and so on through the quantification. All right, Andrew, appreciate the insight. Thank you for joining us today. And thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino with Tag Cyber. Thank you.